Okay. That was our year. Uh, some of the pictures of some of the things that, uh, of, our, of our youth group. Um, this year, one of the things that if you are new to here, uh, to us, one of the things that we've done uh, since I've been here is that uh, on Youth Sunday, uh, I don't preach, Steve doesn't preach, or Neil doesn't preach. It is our students will give testimonies uh, just about what God has been doing in their lives and what God is calling to next. So we have, I think we have seven, we have seven, I don't think I know, but actually we, there are 12 seniors from our youth group that are graduating, and there are their pictures and what's happening with them, and so we're going to go just in that picture, we're going to go across, and that's the order that they're going in. They don't know that, I just told them. So uh, we're going to start with Evan, and we'll work their way around until we get to uh, who would be the last one? Would be Anna. So you guys can see what it is. So Evan, come on up. Let me pray for them as they come and uh, share. Uh, Evan, you can come on up. Uh, Father in heaven, we pray for, the, for our students as they come and they share, God, what you have done in their lives and, what God, where you're calling them. We pray as they share, God, that you'll calm the nerves, but you'll also... Um, let them speak the truth that you have called them to write down and just, God, how you've inspired them. And, Father, we pray that, they will, that we as a church will be inspired ourselves about what the next generation church looks like because of these students and their love for you. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you all hear me? Okay. First things first, I rebuke all unclean spirits of nervousness and anxiety. In Jesus' mighty name, out, amen. All right. <laughs> um, to be honest, either, I didn't really rehearse this. So I have some notes right here so I can just read off that. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Evan Cole. I just graduated from Quabbin Regional High School two days ago. It was absolutely amazing. And... <laughs> I don't know if you all have heard of the school or the town. I'm, I'm from Barrie, Massachusetts. It's kind of in the middle of the woods. And high school, likewise, is also in the middle of the woods. So that's great, too. Um, but I'm here today to tell you a little bit about myself and to how specifically the Alpha and Omega Youth Group Program completely changed. And I'm not exaggerating when I say this. It saved my life. So for some background context, I grew up in a Christian home, you know, knowing who God is, knowing who Jesus is, but church was kind of an on and off thing. It wasn't too often that we'd go there on Sundays, and most times, to be perfectly honest, in the midst of my short-sightedness, I would prefer to stay at home and play video games instead of knowing about Jesus, who gave me the hands to play video games with. It's kind of ironic, but that's really who I was. And because of that, I was always, I was living in sin. You know, the whole classic, you know, and the fruits of that, that we all know, depression, anxiety, insecurity, even suicidal thoughts, or even nihilism as well. I was basically all of that encompassed into one person. And that resulted in a lot of addiction as well to a lot of these different things that I know a lot of other young men deal with as problems today. Addictions to social media, addictions to video games, addictions to pornography. That was me. That was all of those things. And it was just, I, I really didn't like where I was at in my life. And in the midst of my short-sightedness to put myself in that situation, I was also a little bit self-aware. And that self-awareness led me to pursue my own self-improvement, to try and fix my own life in my own way. And you know what, actually I succeeded. I did fix my own life. Things got a lot better. I, started, I hated how I looked, for example, so I started going to the gym and I fixed that problem, so it worked. And I was addicted to all these different things I just talked about, so I cut them off. And life got a lot better. However, there's no meaning to be found in that. And that's a realization that I only came to six months ago when I really started taking this whole church thing seriously, is that you can't find meaning in your own self-improvement. You can't find meaning in any effort that you'll put yourself to that isn't your own relationship with God. Relationship with God always comes first. It's like a triangle, I like to describe it. It's like God is at the top of the epicenter, and if you work from the, if you work from the top downwards, then you find meaning in everything else that you do. But you always seek the kingdom first. Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added to you. So that's a lesson that I learned. And that's a lesson I learned in the midst of my own self-improvement. 
Because whilst I did fix a lot of the problems I was going through, I was still struggling. I was still struggling with addiction. I was still relapsing on porn all the time. I was still insecure about who I was, and I was certainly lacking direction and purpose as to who I was right now and who I could have been. And I was introduced to this youth group program during that time when I felt directionless and lost. It was actually, um, I know you're in the crowd right now, Jack. You introduced me and also at Nigel as well. You invited me to come to the youth group programs. And reluctantly, I didn't actually want to go. I was pretty awkward too. You know this, like, I was, I would rather have been doing pull-ups on the swing set than actually talk to the kids here. That's who I was at the time. And yes, I do love working out, but that's no excuse not to fellowship. And that's a mistake that I made at first. And gradually over time, my heart became more and more open to it, just receiving all of you and how welcoming your presence was and how amazingly kind and warm and just so, I'm gonna say it again, kind all of you have been to me. So firstly, I have you to thank. And that's what really changed my heart and opened me up to knowing Christ. And it just kind of spiraled from there. And then from that point on, God has used me in a lot of different ways. Like I got baptized the 31st. Um, and he's been calling me go, to go into personal ministry. And that's a couple of different things. So I have my own YouTube channel where I talk about God. I preach the gospel, basically. It's my, I first started it back around November when I really started giving my life to Christ. And since then, so like six months later, it's amassed a total amount of views of 225,000. And have a total of 6,000 subscribers right now. That is 6,000 more people that have heard the message of the gospel. Amen to that. Um, additionally, so I want to keep building that up. And also, I am going to go to Northeastern Baptist College in Bennington, Vermont, after a gap year. So I can spend my own time getting more involved in this church, building up my own ministry. And I'm going to go for biblical theology and study, biblical studies and theology, so I can build my own church and become my own pastor and pursue that as well. And now, just in my life right now, John, that's very far in the future, but right now I'm finally starting to experience that peace that the Bible talks about all the time. Experiencing that contentment that Paul talks about in Philippians 4.12. Experiencing that faith, what true faith looks like. With that faith that can move mountains, but small as a mustard seed at the same time in Matthew 17.20. I'm starting to feel that now. And it's a blessing to behold in that. And my prayer for this testimony, this little spiel about who I am, is that it encourages you and it blesses your walk with the Lord today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Good morning, church. Um, my name is Adonijah Copeland. I'm 18 years old, and I just graduated yesterday from being homeschooled for seven years. Um, and I'm here to share about my journey with Christ from the time I started coming to Hope Chapel and onward. Um, before I even knew what Hope Chapel was, my family and I had been going to a Ghanaian African church for 12 years, and I was invited to youth group by a family friend that had been coming to Hope at the time. Um, when I came to youth group for the first time, I had no idea what I was walking into. I sat in one of the green chairs that you would see um, in the lobby and pretended that I had, to, I had something to do on my phone when really there was nothing. Then all of a sudden, I hear yelling, laughing, running, and as a little, wait, not little, but quite tall 11-year-old, I was thinking, what is going on? I really enjoyed my first youth group and couldn't wait to tell my parents how much fun I had. Little did I know, I would meet my best friend of seven years here, um, sorry, and then I wouldn't miss another youth group after that. Um, after I had been coming for a little while, the youth band at the time was um, practicing for Sunday's worship. That band included Charlotte Mullane, um, Abed Rondina, and Paige Maroney, <laughs> who are all leaders now. Pastor Ken told me to come and watch them practice, and long story short, that's how I came into the youth worship team as a sixth grader and had the pleasure of being a part of it for six years. I went on all the trips and all the retreats. I accepted Christ into my life when I was 12 years old at YC in 2018, and I got baptized shortly after that. That was a very high peak in my faith journey, and I was so excited to share my good news. But after my high, I started to get lazy in my faith, and then 
then when there was a trip, I'd get Jesus high again and fall back right where I was and shortly, ap shortly after that. This back and forth cycle lasted for about five years. My faith went really down here when my, um, whoo, sorry. My faith, my faith really went downhill after my aunt un, unexpectedly passed away back in 2021. Um, if you were, if I was fully honest, the rest of the um, of that year was a blur. I was very angry. I was very mad at God, and I was asking him, him why she didn't get to live a long, full life, or what was the purpose of her dying young, and what good was coming from that. I became very bitter and had a, heart to a hard heart towards everything and everyone around me. The past three years have been very difficult, and I'm still in the process of coming out of that bitter and dark cocoon I put myself in. But God held every one of my tears in his hand. Pastor Ken had brought a song called We Surrender by Hillsong Worship to our youth group, and that is what I find myself continuously doing. I was given the opportunity to go on, a, uh, a mi go on missions, not once, but twice, and can't express how amazed I was that God could use someone broken like me and bless and help people in a different country. If, if you were to tell the sixth grade me that I could go out of the country twice to Rwanda, I would think you were absolutely crazy. And looking back, it gives me so much reassurance that God had a plan for my life, and it's a good one. As for my plans for after graduation, I'll be sticking around because y'all can't get rid of me that easily. <laughs> I'll be taking a gap year and be, I'll be using that year to pray and seek God for what his will is for my next step. I wanted to say thank you to my parents, Curtis and Zashan, for sticking with me. I know these 18 years have not been easy, but we, you, you both were there to pick me up when I fell down. Thank you guys for fighting for me. Thank you, Pastor Ken, for being a man of opportunity. Oh, sorry, I lost where I was. Your main goal was to see your students grow in the Lord. You've been doing this for so long, but you still shepherd each student with joy and love. Thank you, Charlotte Mullane. You're such a leader. I'm so honored to have you part of my life. You're like a sister mom. <laughs> Thank you, Brittany Willem, for being the best mentor and walking through life with, walking through life with you has been such a joy. And last but certainly not least, thank you, Christina Davidson, for coming alongside me as a worship leader. You do this with so much grace and love, and I'm so grateful for you. Before I finish, I want to end my testimony with my life verse, which is Joshua 1.9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Thank you. Good morning, church. I'm Maya Vanowski. I'm a senior this year, um, and I'm going to share a little bit about my testimony. So ever since I was a baby, my parents raised me as a Catholic. I went through CCD, my first communion, and 8 a.m. church every single Sunday. And right when I turned 15, my parents said to me that they wanted me to get confirmed and at that point in my life, I did not want to get confirmed at all. I tried to not do it. I fought it. I did not want to do it at all. And they forced me to do it. And right after that, I was completely fed up with the church. And I stopped going altogether. And I only went unless I had to if it was like a holiday. Um, but I never had a genuine relationship with God, even though I was surrounded by it as a child. I never picked up my Bible, and I was never taught how to know God, and I didn't know him for myself, and I wasn't searching for a relationship with him or to believe that I even needed him. Um, until one day at school, junior year, it was a study hall, and my friend Lily over there, who wasn't even my friend at the time, was telling me about the trip to Rwanda that Hope was going on in April, and she was telling me about the people that were touched on the trip and the kids, they all just wanted to be hugged and loved. 
and I always wanted to do a mission trip, and it piqued my interest because maybe one day I could participate in that. And she told me about youth group, and she told me about the people that were less fortunate, and I always wanted to do something bigger than myself and leave the little bubble that I lived in. And a few months later in August, I was broken up with after a year-long relationship, and I was in a really broken place. I, it was a very painful experience. I never thought it was going to end, but I would never trade it for anything because it was what brought me to know God. And the same month, I texted Lily, and she invited me to go to youth group, and I never stopped going since then. The first thing I said to Ken was I never knew church could be like this because everyone was wicked happy and running around and everyone was just brought together because of God in a wicked positive light. And it was a time where I was listening to the sermons and I just felt like God was talking to me through Ken and I just felt wicked impacted from everything that he was saying. And I felt like I was learning to heal from the broken place I was in and become a better person. And I began to take my faith very seriously and get involved in anything that I could. I went all all the retreats in the camps, and I accepted Christ at YAC. And I joined Formed, which was the Rwanda trip. And even though I couldn't travel, I learned so much about the faith. And it developed, like, a stronger relationship with God, and I learned more about Christianity. And there was this, when I started reading the Bible for the first time, I was reading Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, and it says, For everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to cry and a time to laugh. I have seen the burden God placed on us all, yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. And from living life from a broken place and not believing in God and just going on my own ways, um, the only thing I can say that it completely changed my life. Even in times where I wanted to hold on to the things that were no longer for me, I knew that God had a reason for everything and that it happens on his timing. And that knowing God and knowing that, it brought me a lot of comfort. God took me from a broken place and showed me more to life than I've ever experienced before. I got to embrace so many new people and meet the most genuine, joyful people I've ever met. And they only want to see you succeed and love you like God does. I learned what it meant to sacrifice my old selfish life to things that once brought me temporary happiness to things that brought me true joy. And nothing worldly has become exciting to me anymore as it once did because the only person I want to live for is the one that gave up his for mine. And I learned that you are never alone, even in the hardest times when you feel alone, he's always there. And no one can fill up your cup like God does. Even though I'm still new in my faith journey, there are far greater things that I know God has planned for me. And the most important thing is that I learned is that we are in desperate need for a savior because Christ is far greater than anyone who walks this earth. And in August, I'm very excited because I'm leaving for Coastal Carolina University and I'm gonna join the ministry there and those are my plans, so yeah. morning. My name is Lily Grady. I'm 18 years old and I'm graduating from Wachusett next Thursday. Um, my first time at Hope was my freshman year during the pandemic and when I first came I purely wanted socialization because everything else in town was closed. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, Charlotte Mullane invited me because she's actually friends with my sister and she had been preaching the gospel to my sister for years and actually reached me through that. So I'm very thankful that I did end up coming. And um, I come from a family who never grew up going to church. Even on holidays, um, I have never gone to church. I never knew what church looked like. And at first I was really nervous that I wouldn't fit in, but I was just excited again. I just wanted to socialize and I thought this is a good experience for me to try. Um, Quickly, when I walked into church, I was reassured with friendly faces and welcoming hands, and after the first night, I immediately knew something in my life was very different. At first, I never really knew what kept calling me back every week, but I knew I had to be there because it just was such a 
an experience that I can't describe to anyone. I just felt so welcomed and like I needed to, my attendance was mandatory. I needed to be there. And so after about a month, I started to struggle a little bit just because I wasn't forming the same relationship that everyone else around me had with the Lord. Um, this was until I was invited to a camp called Fuge, which was a, le- a week-long mission trip, and it was connected with um, fellow believers around the country and serving the state as they needed. Towards the third night of this camp, I realized that the Lord was calling me in a way that I had never felt. This night I was saved, and it was a feeling that I could truly never describe, but it left me with joy and eagerness to spend my faith. Charlotte was the first person I called after I accepted Christ, and I was, like, jumping off the walls. I was like, Charlotte, you'll never believe. I just, like, this is so crazy, and it was, like, the best phone call ever. And um, this trip was a huge stepping stone in my faith, and I'm forever thankful for that, that the Lord had a path for me and to go on this trip. Uh, Since this trip, my faith has definitely been a journey with many ups and downs, but thankfully I have had my friends from youth group near me to support me in every step of my faith. Youth group has since allowed me to serve on a mission trip every summer, volunteer on Mondays with the junior high, be a part of a nine-month program called FORM two times, and equip me with ways to stand firm in my faith everywhere. Uh, Summer mission trips have allowed me to connect with other believers and be the hands and feet of the Lord. Monday nights with junior high are some of my favorite nights. Um, They've allowed me to just connect with the younger kids and just show them and kind of be a role model to those who may come from a similar position that I do. Um, Wednesday nights have been also a very great place with people my age. It's very busy and it's an opportunity for me to grow closer and have just a moment of stillness in a very busy week. Um, specifically Romans 12, 2 has stuck with me throughout my time at church as it states, do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is good, pleasing, and perfect, and perfect will of God. Standing firm in my faith is quite hard for me just because sometimes going home and like being in a family who doesn't accept Christ is pretty hard. (laughs) Sorry. Um... So it's hard to stand firm in my faith, but I know that that is what the Lord wants for me and something that I need to do because I hope that my family does come to church one day and they will see that through me as I uh, attest to that. But sorry. Um, yeah, but I would like to thank all my friends at youth group because they've just been so great and just helped me stand firm my faith and be there to support me when I need it. And I thank you, Charlotte, <laughs> for bringing me <laughs> to church. And um, I thank the Halls because they've kind of taken me in as like my church family and helped me um, really just feel loved by the Lord. So thank you. Good morning. My name's Kaylee, and I graduated from Monty Tech on the 22nd of May. Um, So everyone talks about this man named Jesus, but who is he really? What did he do that makes him so important? My name is Kaylee, and Jesus saved my life. Through high school, through my high school experience, holding my faith was one of the hardest challenges I faced. From facing hardship to enduring constant pain, I got lost in a world full of sin. During the four years of high school, I never fully understood why God would put his so-called daughter through so much pain. If I were his daughter, why would he put me through so much pain and hardships? I came to Hope Chapel in May of 2021. It was the end of my freshman year. I grew up in a family that did not go to church. So when I got asked if I wanted to go, I was kind of scared, but at that time in my life, I always thought about what other people were thinking of me. Did they like me? Was I too loud? Did I fit in? Coming on that Monday night in March changed my life. Fast forward a little bit after accepting Christ and getting baptized. A few summer camps later and a mission trip to Africa. In July of 2023, during Fuge, I started to experience shaking in my legs. A chaperone brought me to the hospital, and I was scared. I was hours away from my parents, not knowing what was going on. 
I got told my potassium was, level was really low, so I ate a lot of bananas for the rest of that week. The shaking didn't get better. Fast forward again, after months and months of doctor's appointments and doctors telling me it was just all in my head and it was anxiety. During those months, I constantly doubted God and always asked him, why me? Why did this happen during my senior year of high school? I was losing my faith slowly. Over the time, the shaking got worse and progressed to my whole body. In March of 2024, everything took a turn for the worse. One day, I got taken out by ambulance out of my school. I got brought to the nearest hospital. I got transferred to UMass. That was the hardest time in my life. At this point, I almost lost my faith completely. I was told there was a good chance I wouldn't be able to drive, maybe not graduating because I missed so much school, and not going on the mission trip in Africa that was in two weeks. I wanted to give up. I turned away from my parents and my doctors in the hospital bed in tears, not knowing what to do. Instead of doubting God on his plan for me, I started to pray. I asked God just to heal me from what was going on in that moment. A couple hours later, my test results came back. Um, I was diagnosed with functional neurological seizure disorder. When I heard seizures, I freaked out. I asked why God did this to me. Why me? The doctor then explained these seizures I can control. They won't damage my body. And I can do everything I want, like drive, go on the mission trip if my parents were okay with it. And I could stay, still play field hockey in the fall at college. The doctor gave me strategies to get through the aura so I wouldn't have a seizure. I have not had a seizure since that day in the hospital. I thought to myself, this was God's plan all along. He helped me go, grow as a person with this, even when we doubt God and his plan. His path for us is the best path. In April, I went to my second overseas mission trip. I'm able to drive. I graduated high school, and I'm still able to play field hockey. After these past months, I have gone through so much pain and hardship no one should ever go through. These weaknesses has helped me to shape me into the person I am today. I learned to give Jesus the wheel and stand firm in my faith. Through his words, I gained wisdom, patience, trust in God that he has the right path for us because it is his path. Thank you, Alpha and Omega, as well as everyone from Hope Chapel for being my second family. Good morning, church. Um, I've been told I'm an authentic person, so I'm just going to tell you exactly what's going on. There's some things that are on that aren't on the paper that I that I wanted to be. So um, I'm just going to tell you real quick. I'm going to do my thank yous right now because I just can't put it off anymore. Um, thank you to my parents. Um, they're not here yet, but they'll be coming with my other favorite people in a couple minutes. Um, thank you, Danielle. I couldn't have done this or a lot of other things without you. Thank you to my siblings and my church family and um, Charlotte and all the youth leaders. Um, I grew up in a Christian home. I've been going to church since before I was born. Um, so, um, yeah, I'll get started now. Um, oh, and I got baptized at 10 years old, I think. Um, getting here today, here as in this stage right now, and this point in my life has been quite the journey. From actual roads Jesus has led me on, places he's brought me to, things he's taught me, and events that have gone down that are plainly a result of living in a fallen world, and ones that can only be, de be described as gift from God. There have been so many opportunities for growth, the Lord has blessed me with so many experiences that he has used to prune me, like Jesus talks about in 15, John 15, too. The Father cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit. He prunes the branches that do bear fruit so that they can produce even more. The notes in my study Bible under that verse 
say, God sometimes must discipline us to strengthen our character and faith. But people who don't bear fruit for God or who try to block the efforts of God's followers will be cut off from his life-giving power. As painful as these processes can be, I'm so thankful for the ways that he has already pruned and purified me to help produce the fruit he has allowed me to bear for his glorious kingdom. I've seen this especially in these past three years as part of Hope Chapel, Alpha and Omega Youth, and the Formed Program on mission and in my personal life among friends and family. I will continue to praise, thank, and submit and surrender to him because he promises to continue his work in us until it's finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns, which is from Philippians 1.6. I'm also so thankful to be part of a church family where many of you already know a lot of these examples of prunings, trials and harvests, of blessings and fruit bearings. A family that cares and asks how each other are doing and helps carry each other's burdens, like Galatians 6.2 talks about. I know this is true, and God puts these people in all of our lives. So if you're not feeling it, the surrounding of the people that God has to walk with you, I challenge you to, one, pray for it, and two, to be the friend that you want to have. And I can promise from personal experiences that Galatians 6, 9 is true. It says, so let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we do not give up, which is the Bible verse I put on my graduation cap. There were a couple times this week that I really did not want to come up here this morning. Because I had a plan for what to say, and it didn't work out, so I was stressed. To that, my mom said, so tell them that. Shout out to her as one of my very best friends, greatest support and counsel after the Holy Spirit, of course. It turns out, me having a plan and it not working out because God has something bigger and better in mind is a reoccurring theme, theme in my life. Hence, the next right thing on the screen behind me instead of the college that I had planned on attending. Remember Gideon? How he had the means to gain the victory over the Midianites, but God, gotta love that phrase, um, sorry, uh, took it away in order to produce a greater victory and more glory for himself. That's what I believe he's doing with me. Someone close to me, another shout out, asked me about a month ago if I was totally confident about something. I answered that, honestly, there are things that I have been totally confident about before that didn't happen the way I was sure that they would, like healing from JRA before, from JRA before my 17th birthday and my baby brother and sister never being removed from our home. So at this point, what I'm truly confident in is just that God is good and causes everything to work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose for them, Romans 8.28. So now I will end with my third and final shout out and definitely the most important one from the end of Ephesians 3. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. Good morning, church. <laughs> um, my name is Anna Stillman. I am 18, and I have graduated from being homeschooled my entire life. <laughs> so it's a big change. Um, I just wanted to start with sharing how my family came to Hope Chapel. During 2020, we had been watching our former church online because nobody could go in, obviously, because of the quarantine. And we had decided that we wanted to try something new and my mom had come to a homeschool gathering here a while ago. So she suggested, hey, why don't we try Hope Chapel? So we started watching it and we decided that we really liked it and um, we made the decision to switch to Hope Chapel. Um, me and my sister started attending youth group in mid-2020 um, and it was a big change for me. I wasn't a fan of change. I was comfortable where I was. So it was a tough time for me, but I am beyond thankful that God placed us in this church. Um, coming to youth group for the first time was definitely overwhelming for me. 
I was used to slow acoustic, acoustic guitar music at our old youth group. So coming to the speakers, blasting music, and the lights going on and off, and everybody jumping and clapping was definitely different to me. Um, <laughs> a big change. Um, I can say now that I'm used to it, and I am participating in clapping, but I am not quite there for the jumping. <laughs> um, <laughs> But everybody has their own style of worship, and as long as it praises God, then it's good. Um, another hard part for me was that we didn't know anybody here at the time, so it was just a hard transition for me. Um, but as time went on, I got more and more comfortable. Granted, it did take me a while to break out of my shell. Even now, I'm not a very outgoing person, but... Um, Everybody here was just so welcoming and kind, and it really just helped me open up. Um, the leadership is amazing. The friends I've made are amazing. I can remember the first few weeks seeing a group of girls and being like, man, I wish I was friends with them. And not knowing how, I didn't know how to talk to them or even go up to them. But now I can say that I've been on retreats with them, I've gone on missions with them, and they are some of the most important people in my life. <laughs> um, <laughs> Being in youth group not only strengthened my confidence in myself and my abilities, it also strengthened my relationship and confidence in Christ. My family has always been a part of the church. I grew up in Sunday school, attended VBS, and so on. I got saved when I was six and baptized when I was 13, so I've always known God. But coming to Hope Chapel really tested my relationship with him. He tested my trust, my peace, and my patience. He led me into great friendships and a great church community. He also pushed me to do hard things, things that I didn't think I would be able to do. For example, when Pastor Ken first introduced the forum program, I honestly did not want to do it. I didn't think that I would be able to be in a group of kids that I did not know very well, and I didn't think that he, I could be used in any special way. But I was blessed to have my parents, my siblings, and our awesome leaders to support me and push me to try it. I never dreamed, I never dreamed that God would lead me to go to Africa three times in the span of one year and make so many impactful friendships and relationships. If you were to tell my past self, hey, God is going to work through you to lead a group of Rwandan women to crochet, I would have like thought you were crazy and turned around and left. <laughs> but <laughs> um, I'm so thankful that God led me here and pushed me in all these ways, and I'm so ex excited to see where he is going to lead me next. Um, as for my immediate future, I don't really have a set plan for the next year. I will be taking a gap year and working as much as I can. And I'm also playing with the idea of doing some missions for a little bit, if that's where God is leading me. But to sum it all up, Alpha, <laughs> Alpha and Omega really helped me grow as a teen and as a believer. And I'm really sad to be aging out of it. But I am so excited to take what it's taught me to go out and live my life as I grow more and more in God. Um, I just wanted to share a verse that I found on our previous missions trip that I thought was so good. And it's definitely relevant to us as graduates in our season. It is Proverbs 3, 6, and it says, seek his will in all that you do, and he will show you which path to take. Thank you so much. Isn't that amazing? This, people always ask me, why do you do what you do? That's why, because of those students. Hey, we're giving, for all of our, our seniors, we have a book, it's called Adulting 101. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wisdom for life, it's a must read for those, just as they enter into the real world, it's not a, like a college book, it's about how to take next steps with God um, after, after graduating from, uh, from high school. And wherever God is calling you, calling them, we're excited uh, that uh, you are going with God and that you're not going alone. Hey, let me pray for us. As the band comes up, I'm going to pray, and then we guys are dismissed. As the band plays, they're going to sing one more song and have some more fun and just have a great time. Uh, youth group, we, we are so blessed to have a church that loves students, and uh, as you can see, so that you will know that your faithfulness to God to be a part of this church, um, this is what comes out of your faithfulness. It's the, I, I'm, I feel privileged to do it, but it is your faithfulness 
that affords us to be able to have a youth ministry that has, just so that you know, I, uh, we had this year, our highest one was 86 students on, on a one week. So, and so that is just an awesome, uh, it is an, ano- we are an anomaly in New England to have that many students that come and I'll share, if you want to know more, I'm sharing at the business meeting tonight. So come to the business meeting. All right, well, let's have, let me pray and then have the band come up. Come on, Ben. Uh, Father in heaven, we thank you for uh, these students that have a love for you, that love you so much uh, because you love them. Father, we pray that you will give them just uh, as they go, um, as they enter into the summer, um, as we move into that position, that, Father, they will stay uh, focused on you, um, that they will share the gospel with every, at every opportunity to proclaim your love to those who do not know and to go into those places, those dark places, where, God, where they can be the light. We pray all these things in your